excited to be able to bring back somebody we've been so empowered by this year and this season and um, somebody who has been um, actually phenomenal in changing several people's lives that um, have been coming to the meetings that I've seen some great testimonials. So I was so excited to have our next speaker come back and share with you guys. Okay. Um, Diane Altamar, yes, is a professional speaker, coach, and author. She is known as the coach with the authentic, gentle, and laser-focused approach. She has a gift for nailing the deep truth behind any situation. She is the go-to expert for anyone who wants to create something new and inspiring in any area of their life. Diane has couched th coached thousands of people over the last 15 years to create more freedom, power, abundance, love, and joy in every area of their life. Her expertise is in helping individuals and businesses reach their highest level of fulfillment and purpose. She received her extensive training as a master level certified coach from world renowned coach and speaker and author Debbie Ford, the leader of the Ford Institute for Integrative Coaching. Diane is the author of the upcoming book, Ignite Yourself, and it is being released this year and offers a variety of free resources to help you create a life that is inspiring and exciting for you. So please give a warm welcome for Diane Altamar. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. I'm so excited. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. I'm really excited to be here, to be back here. And I don't know if anybody in the room was here in September, but I'm really excited to share with you how to really powerfully move past whatever's holding you back. So we're going to look today at a couple different things. But what I want you to do is really pick an area of your life that you want to create something new in or a part of your life that you feel like you're really struggling in. So it could be either side of it, a part that you're totally dissatisfied with or something that is actually starting to happen that you just want to take to that next level. And connect for a second with that feeling. You all know that feeling and I know it really well too when you want something so badly. You want to create something in your life or you want something for your family or for your kids or you just know that you have this gift and in your heart you want to give it but you can't because there's something holding you back. There's something going on inside of you and I see people smiling and nodding their head, right? Because we all have that experience. There's something happening within us or in some part of our life that we just don't know how to fix or change or make go away or stop and so we're going to look at three distinct ways that are really powerful today that will help you to identify what exactly is holding you back. And then most importantly, my intention for you is that you walk out of here in the next 30 minutes knowing what you're going to do differently this week to make a shift in that part of your life. And it really can be that simple. You know, we don't have to go through years and years of therapy or years and years of coaching to start making small changes right now. And I'm going to give you the tools so that you know exactly what it is that you need to do. You guys ready? All right. So go on a journey with me for a second. Just close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, just take a deep breath. And as I ask you these questions, just allow yourself to get connected to your own inner wisdom, to your inner voice, to that part of you that has that desire or that knows what you want to create or knows there's something more or better for you. And then just ask yourself, what part of my life is most important for me to focus on today? What part of my life do I most want to have a breakthrough in? And just trust whatever is coming to you. Sometimes we think one area of our life is not working really well and that's what we want to focus on and we really need to focus on something else. So trust whatever area is coming to you. And then just take another deep breath and allow yourself to see 
that part of your life as it is right now. Just see yourself in relationship with the people in that part of your life. Notice how you feel about what's happening, what the current circumstances or conditions are. And just give yourself permission without judgment to just notice it as it is. Just for a moment, be the observer. And we have that vision, just open your eyes and come back to the room. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these three ways that we hold ourselves back and we're going to look at it through this part of our life so that you have very specific things when you leave here that you can start to implement in this one area. So the three different areas, you wanna write these down. The first one's distractions. The second one is disconnection. And the third is dissatisfaction. And so let's first look at our distractions. So distractions, disconnection, and dissatisfaction. We all know distractions, right? We all know how easily it is to get distracted. So maybe you're already starting to take action on what you want to create and you can see it. Like you can visualize what it's going to be like when it happens and what you want it to be like. And so you start taking action and you start moving forward and you might get a little excited and things are happening and then all of a sudden something distracts you. Something takes you off course. And so instead of it being like this straight road to where you want to go, right? Because life is not success only. We start to kind of go, you know, back and forth and veer off and get totally distracted and go over here and look out the window for a while and not really remember what it is that we were trying to create. And so what we want to look at in terms of distractions is I want to arm you with being conscious of what distractions are present in your life in this part of your life. So that this week, instead of not being aware or instead of getting distracted and then beating yourself up because you did that thing again that got you distracted, you can just start to gently observe and become aware of how you get thrown off course and then make those choices to get back on. So let's throw out some distractions. What distracts you? Phone. The phone, right? So other people's needs, what somebody else needs in that moment, right? That's a big one. That is a big one for women specifically and for all of us, but for women specifically is other people's needs, right? So we're focused on what we want to create or we're focused on doing something that feels really good to us and then the phone rings or the email, the little sound or the text, right? Or a thought in our head that like, oh my God, I should be doing this over here and I forgot I have to go do this, right? Those are all distractions. Here's another distraction, fear. Fear is a big distraction. Negative beliefs about ourselves are big distractions because we're, we're on track, we're creating what we want to create and then all of a sudden we might get discouraged because something didn't go perfectly as planned, right? And so we make that whatever thing happened mean something about us, right? We internalize it, we make it mean something about us and then uh, it's not meant to be. Maybe this isn't supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen. If you have the desire, you're supposed to create it. The desire is what tells us, is what the signal is to show us what it is that we want, who we are, what our gifts are, what we want to contribute. We have to listen to our desires. Desires are the most important thing that we can really focus on and connect with because that helps us to really become who we're meant to be. So if you have that desire and you're working on it and you have that distraction and it takes you off course, this week we're gonna look at specific things that you can do and we're gonna do that in a second. But before we do that, I wanna go on to the next section. So the next way that we hold ourselves back is disconnection. And this is a huge one. This is something that when I use this in coaching people, they have huge breakthroughs because we are disconnected from so many things that are available to us 
not only within us, but resources that we have, connections we have, relationships that we have, different things that we need to be connected to. So let's start to look at what you're disconnected to in the part of your life that you most want to have a shift in. So disconnections can be something like, let's say that you want to work on your health and your fitness. In that part of your life, you might be totally disconnected from your body. You might be disconnected from what you need, like what you need to eat or what your body wants you to nourish it with. You might be disconnected from listening to that inner voice or your intuition if you're creating something. A lot of times I hear, well, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know how to get there. And what that means is you're disconnected from your intuition because if we have a desire to create something, we also have within us just as strongly that intuition that will guide us one step at a time. And when you have a vision that might be three years out or a year out or whatever it is you want to create, you don't need to know. That's the awesome thing. You don't need to know how to make it happen. You're not supposed to know how to make it happen step by step because as you take one step, that step guides you to the next step. Or you meet somebody that says, oh, I want you to come speak here. And you're like, wow, I never knew I'd speak at Moms in Charge. I didn't even know what Moms in Charge was before I met Dottie. Right? And so now I'm here speaking, but I didn't see this as a part of my vision when I was back there years ago creating that vision. It happens step by step. So disconnection. So we're going to look at in a moment what you need to do to get really reconnected to whatever within you you need to be connected to. So maybe that's your power, your strength, your courage, the knowing that you can do it, the belief in yourself those things that we're disconnected from. Sometimes in relationships, we're disconnected from our own needs. So if relationship is the area that you're looking at today, you might want to look at how you're disconnected from yourself and how that's impacting your relationship and how you might be disconnected from that other person. So there's different ways that we show up in a way that's disconnected. And so the third area is dissatisfaction. And dissatisfaction is really a dream killer. Dissatisfaction, focusing on what's not working in our life, is how we completely cut ourselves off from being connected to our strength and our power and to who we are. So let's look at this part of your life and how dissatisfaction shows up. So just think for a moment, over the past seven days, how often you've complained about this part of your life, you've talked about it in a negative way to somebody, you've thought about it in a negative way internally, you have looked at how it's not working, you don't know what to do to make it happen, how you focused on really the negative of what's going on. And so when we look at what you're going to do this week to really move past this dissatisfaction part, we're going to look at how instead of focusing on what's not working, instead of focusing on who we believe we're not or what we believe we're not able to do, what we want to focus on is who we already are. What do I have right now where I'm at with who I am that I can use to get to that next place in this area of my life, in this vision? Focusing on where you're at right now with what you have and taking action on that. Because what's really important about dissatisfaction is it's important to know where we're dissatisfied so that we can create something new in that area, right? It's important to know, well, I don't, I don't really like how that's going or that doesn't feel fulfilling or that's not enough. But to continually focus intently on the dissatisfaction, that's what takes us off course. We can have a gentle awareness of the dissatisfaction and that things aren't working, and then our whole focus needs to be on what is already working. Who am I already? What can I already bring to the table in order to make this happen? Because what we focus on expands. That's an important thing to write down and something to really sit with this week. 
what we focus on expands. And so if you look at over the past seven weeks, or seven days or seven weeks, what you've been bringing to this area of your life, whatever you've currently been bringing is what is expanding. So that is what you are communicating to yourself, to the world, to the people around you. It's just energy. It's the law of energy, the law of attraction. It is what it is, we can't change it. And so if you focus on what isn't working and you focus on the negative, you will get more of that. And so here's a challenge for the next seven days in this part of your life, challenge yourself to not say, think, or do anything negative. And if you do, just catch yourself. And beating yourself up for doing something negative is doing something negative. So if you feel like you start to complain about it, just catch yourself and say, okay, I made a commitment to not do that. And so I'm going to look at what is working. I'm going to look at what I can bring to this right now. And just gently turn your attention back to what it is that you want to focus on. So does anybody have any questions about any of those three areas before we look at like what specifically you could do this week? Anybody have anything they want to throw out on camera? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, so if we look at the first area, let's go back to distractions. And again, just close your eyes for a second. And just take a deep breath and see this part of your life as it is. And then for a moment, dream. Allow yourself to see it in its best version. See this part of your life the way you want it to be, the way you dream of it being. And just notice how you feel. Notice who's there and what's happening. allowing yourself to really be connected and be present to what you want to create. And now we're going to look at these three different areas, distractions, disconnection, and dissatisfaction. But we're going to look at it through the eyes of the vision that you see. So I want you to continually ask yourself, if I was already doing that, if I was already that person, if I was already creating that vision, what would I be doing in these three different areas? How would I move past the distractions? How would I get reconnected? How would I be more satisfied? So let's go back through each one of these ways that we distract or that we, that we hold ourselves back. So the first is distractions, right? And the antidote for distractions is two things. It's focus and it's commitment. So if you're feeling distracted, the first thing that you want to look at is how can I get more focused? How do I need to be more committed? And so like you were sharing before, the phone rings and it distracts you. What would focus and commitment in that moment have you do? not pick up the phone. Or if it was important, it was somebody that you needed to talk to, you would pick up the phone and very quickly say, I'm in the middle of something, what do you need? And you'd help them quickly or say, I'll handle that later, or I'll be able to do that tomorrow. But if we're focused and we're committed on, in, on something, we don't get distracted as easily. So what else? If you look at this part of your life, how would you need to bring more focus and commitment? One of the ways is to look at why you're committed. What, what is it that you feel you would gain once you get to that experience? Why do you want it? It's really important to know why you want that, what you want to feel more of because that'll help you stay committed even in those moments when you don't feel like it or when fear comes up or when something shiny 
looks better for you to do. So just looking at that, what would you need to do to be more focused, more committed? Maybe you need to say no more, set boundaries. A lot of times we need to set boundaries with ourself. Maybe we give up too easy. Instead of focusing for three hours on something or 60 minutes, we might do it for 15 minutes. And then if it gets tough, we switch to another area. One of the things that I tell people who are self-employed is that is an area that is really difficult for us as entrepreneurs because if we don't like to do something, most of the time if we start to do it and something else comes up, we'll just allow ourselves to get distracted really easily because it looks better or it's more fun and we're better at it. And so if you are self-employed or if you're in a position or a career or you're a mom where you don't have somebody like hanging over your head telling you things to do or giving you a structure that you have to follow. You have to create that structure for yourself and then hold yourself accountable. So focus and commitment. So does everybody have one thing they're going to do differently? Everybody have that one thing in this part of your life that you're going to do differently? Good. Okay. All right, so let's look at the second area. So the second area is reconnection, right? It's being disconnected. So if we're looking at it through the eyes of already achieving what we want to achieve, the question is, how can we get reconnected? So in this part of your life, look at what you're disconnected from. If you're disconnected from your intuition or your truth or your body, maybe meditation, maybe yoga, maybe exercise, maybe sitting in silence and just not doing anything. I'm creating a lot of really cool things in my career that are very different than what I've done before. And the phrase, I don't know how, comes up a lot, right? When we're creating something new, Internally, we're just, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make that happen. I know how other people have made it happen, but I don't know how I'm going to make it happen. And so sometimes I'll just sit and just close my eyes and just sit there. I'll just sit and I'll wait and I'll do a meditation or I'll do some yoga or if you just want to sit out in nature and just listen, start to listen for what is my next step. And when we're really connected to ourselves and our truth and our faith and our vision, those answers will come to us. And sometimes we're really disconnected and then we need to get reconnected in order, in order to hear the answers. So what's one thing you could do this week to get reconnected in this part of your life? Saying no is another good one for this part of our life setting boundaries because that helps us to have the time and the space to get reconnected. Letting go of all the busyness and the stuff that you're doing. And that's one of the reasons that I'll just sit because I'll think that I could go do these 10 things and if I'm just really busy with it, then that, that's going to make it happen. And a lot of times those are things that are just keeping me really busy, but they're not really going to get me where I want to go. All right, good, so let's look at that last area. So dissatisfaction. So this week, what is one thing that you can bring to this area of your life to get more connected to what is working, more connected to what you already have in that part of your life? How can you focus more on what's working, on who you already are? on what you've done in the past that has really helped you. So one of the powerful things that you can do in this part of your life is if you're really good in one area of your life, look at the qualities that you bring to that. Look at how you show up in that part of your life. And then notice how you can transfer your way of being in that area into the part where you're struggling. So I have a client who's an attorney, and he's really a powerful, accomplished attorney. He does awesome at work. 
but at home he feels like he's a guest. He doesn't really feel like he lives there. He doesn't feel like he's connected to what's going on with his wife and his kids. And so his focus was to start to bring some of the qualities that he has in his career, like confidence and connection and knowing he knows what he's doing and bringing that to his family. And so he started to do that and he started to look at, you know, what is it that I know how to do with my kids or what do I know how to do or how can I bring my confidence to this part of my life? And he really started to just integrate who he was into his family life. He started to take them out on more sporting events because he really likes that. He started to be more involved in some of the decisions because that makes him feel more connected. So again, it doesn't have to be like this grandiose thing you're gonna do this week to like make something really big happen. It could be, right? But it usually is just these little steps, taking one step at a time. So this is your focus this week. Look at this part of your life and all the other parts of your life and just start to become super conscious of how distractions, disconnection, and dissatisfaction show up. Just start to pay attention. How is this showing up right now? And then gently bring yourself back to alignment, to focus, to commitment, to connection with who you already are, with what you already have, with what you already know, and then start taking action and making those little changes. And gently doing that. I have a great story to share with you about how this worked for me yesterday. So I was gonna wear something else. And clothing is not my greatest gift, like fashion and all that, like I don't like shopping. And I was gonna wear something different and then one of my friends said, you can't, that's not gonna look good on video, right? You can't do that, you can't wear that. And so I got kind of in a fluster and a panic. Oh God, here I gotta go shopping and I don't wanna go shopping and it's 12 o'clock yesterday and I had a lot of other things to do and I wanted to be fresh and prepared and sleep well and all those things. And so I'm like, okay, I have to go shopping. So I went shopping and I literally found nothing. And I mean nothing, like three hours shopping and you know, I'm tiny so I can't find this and this doesn't fit and this doesn't look right and this is swimming and that color isn't good and so, and I was by myself, and I'm, start, and I'm listening because I'm super conscious of what's going on. I'm kind of noticing how I'm getting a little panicky. What am I gonna wear? What am I gonna do? This is tomorrow, I gotta go home. And I just started to notice, and I sat down for a second, and this is just kind of my intuition, my inner voice was saying, just go sit down. Just sit down. Just stop the busyness and the craziness. The mall's so crazy and it's loud and there's all these, like there's perfume everywhere and there's music and it's just like chaos, right? Mm -hmm. So I just sat down and I got to my truth. I got to my truth and that was what I wear doesn't matter. What my hair looks like doesn't matter. We want to distract ourselves with all that stuff and make it all about that and panic. Well, I'm gonna be on video and I gotta look a certain way and it doesn't matter because my truth knew that I would come here, I would connect with you and I would bring what I have. And I said that to my friend, I'm just gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring what I have, bring what I know and that's all I have to do. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It doesn't matter if I'm naked, well maybe it would, but it, if I had a bathing suit on or what I had on, that doesn't matter. I'm still gonna bring who I am here today because I have something to share with you. And I got connected to my truth and all of a sudden I just said, I'm gonna leave the mall. And I just left the mall and I figured out something else to wear and that's the way it was. And what that does is, because you could see how easily, right? I could have gone into panic, like, oh my God, and got all stressed out and all worried. And then what I would have done in that moment was be totally off track of what I really needed to do. And what I really needed to do was just take good care of myself, 
have a lot of self-care so that I could be rested and prepared and sharp and clear and be able to be here connected with you. That was the most important thing. And that was taking me off course. And it, it will happen to us every single day. And the closer you get to your vision, I've noticed, the rockier it gets the more obstacles come up, the more challenges show up. And if you know that, if you prepare for that, if you just acknowledge that that's part of what happens in life, that as we're getting closer to reaching our vision, our stuff comes up or life happens, you can just allow yourself to look at, okay, what do I need to do to handle this? To get back on track and to get refocused. And it's really, that simple it may not be easy but it's that simple so i would love to connect with you all afterward in any way if you have any questions i'm going to be having a cup of tea up in the lounge afterwards and would love to have you visit and just connect and ask anything that you want to ask um, i also do individual coaching so if you have any questions about that my cards are over there and you can ask me about that and I hope that you guys got a lot out of today and that really what you're leaving with is you already have what you need. You're already who you need to be in order to make it happen. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a desire. And all you have to do is look at how you're getting in your own way, how you're allowing all this other stuff to get in your way, and then just get back on track and make it happen. All right, thank you.